قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّهَا That successful indeed is the one who purifies this nafs. You have fear for Allah, but you also fear other people? No. وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَا أَحَدًا Don't fear anybody else, إِلَّا Allah except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is telling us, good words are better. Good words, words of advice, is better than the one who gives charity, but followed by reproach. So there are different levels of tests, and Allah decides who He's going to test. The first level of testing, of course, is with our own nafs. نحمده ونسلم ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي بعث في الأمين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل في ظلال مبين وآخرين منهم لما يلحق بهم وهو العزيز الحكيم سرق الله مولانا العظيم وسرق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح رب زدني علما اللهم صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam We praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Again and again For all the favors and the bounties that he has bestowed upon us as human beings We praise and we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For making us from amongst the best of his creations all the creations Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, you and I need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created many creations, but inshallah we will be enjoying the Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the animals and they will be turned into dust on the day of judgment. Illa qalila, there are few exceptions. They will not be enjoying Jannah. You and I will be enjoying Jannah, inshallah. My dear respected brothers and sisters, if we stand and we speak about the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, we will not be able to end. Probably because of our memories, probably because of lack of expression, we would have to stop. But my dear respected brothers and sisters, surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given us so many favors that we really cannot count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks from us is that we recognize Him, we praise Him, we glorify Him, we tell other people about Him, we give da'wah towards Him, we be righteous believers, we be righteous believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear respected brothers and sisters, when He was going to create the humankind and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew best how He was going to create us, who was going to be our father, who was going to be our mother, and who would come first, who would come last. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He collected different portions of the soil. As we know, we have been created from the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created us with different portions of the soil. When we look at dirt, dirt, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we do not see one color. When you look at dirt, you do not see a particular type of a hardness or softness sometimes you see a mixture sometimes you see differences of colors differences of texture and this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you and I 
The hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen parts of the different earth to create the humankind. And he created our father Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. And then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he further says, this is how we have the different races on the face of the earth. You have black people, you have white people, you have red people, you have brown people. And when we look into the earth, my dear respected brothers and sisters, this is exactly what we will see. Sand, dust, dirt, clay, mud, whatever have you, all of it is from the dirt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created each and every single human being in this gathering and in the entire world. Those who have came before and those who are to come after from the very earth that we are speaking about, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he further informed us that because of this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of this decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would create us from the earth, you and I have been created in different modes and in different fashions. And you and I, our temperaments are different. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that this is why you all differ in temperaments. Some people will be hot-headed, some people will be very mild, some people will be very timid, some people will be cowards, some people will be brave. All in all, we are all human beings and we have been created from the father, our father Adam alayhi salatu was salam. Whatever race, whatever skin color, whatever temperament. A person can be a loner, he has been created from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the point that we are coming at, my dear respected brothers and sisters, whether you are a loner, or whether you are a person that is totally social and you must mix with people, Islam has a place and a portion for each and every single one of us. Islam, it has a place and a portion for each and every single one of us. You and I and the entire of mankind, you and I and the entire of mankind have to fit ourselves in the slot of Islam, my dear respected brothers and sisters. You and I and the entire of mankind, Muslim and non-Muslim, we have to fit ourselves in the slot of Islam. Islam does not have to fix itself in our slots. Islam does not have to fix itself in our slots, my dear respected brothers and sisters. A, Islam is not in need of us. Inna deena indallahi al-Islam. The religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that of Islam. Allah is not in need of anyone. We are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes we hear people make a statement... Well, that is me and I will never change. That is me and I will never change. And this is how I am. Khair, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. If this is how we are, and Islam condones that, we have no problem, mashallah. If it is that we are rigid, we, are, we have a very strong temperament, and sometimes we get angry quickly, if, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we are doing what Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us when we become angry, then mashallah, we know that we are not doing something wrong. But if on the contrary, for the sake of understanding, if we become angry and we say, listen, I will say what I have to say and no one can stop me. I will do what I have to do and no one can stop me. Then we are wrong, my dear respected brothers and sisters. On the other hand, you have a timid person, a cowardice, a person who is a coward. Time to stand up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, no, I cannot do that. Likewise, he is wrong. Why? Because you have, we have to fit ourselves for Islam. Islam does not have to fit itself to suit us, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And this is the point. Each and every single one of us will be different. Each and every single one of us will be different. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed us on the face of the earth for an, for an objective. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the man and jinn except that they worship me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and he has placed us on the face of the earth and he knows best why he did not create us in the time of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. He knows best why he has created us in the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And as a matter of fact, he has created us in such a time and allowed us to come on the face of the earth in such a time whereby we will not see Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. MashaAllah, the Sahabas have seen them, seen him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows 
It is in the capacity within each, within each and every single one of us that we will be able to do good deeds and we will be able to believe in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even though we did not see him. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, this is how we ought to think as believers. We have to think how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants us to think. Everybody, a married couple, they have to think, I have to behave in such a manner that Allah will be pleased with me, a husband. I, I am a, as a husband, I as a father, I have to behave in such a manner that Allah will be pleased with me. I, if I am a husband and I am a father in such a manner that, listen, if you do not make the food according to my standard, then all hell break loose. We have to look and see. Is it that Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that we can behave like that? If not, then we have to change that attitude, my dear respected brothers and sisters. If it is, I take a big fat piece of cane and I beat my child if he does not perform salah in such a manner that it could cripple him, in such a manner that it could make severe marks of, on his body. I have to look up in the, in the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is this what my Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam taught me? If that is not the case, my dear respected brothers and sisters, then we have to pluck it out from ourselves. We have to take it out from ourselves. And like this, my dear respected brothers and sisters, each and every single one of us must do some type of soul searching. Soul searching is supposed to be done every day, every morning, every, every minute, every second, and every, every evening, and every night, my dear respected brothers and sisters. But as we said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with different temperaments. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in such a manner whereby he, we have to train ourselves. A human being cannot just be good all in one. We can be good, mashallah, in certain aspects, but we will be bad in other aspects. And this is why the ayah that we have recited, this was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was telling us of why he sent the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Al-Jum'ah. And he said that he sent the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil ummiyin amongst the unlettered people, a messenger, that is Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he would recite unto them the kitab, wa yuzakki him, and he would purify them. Wa yuzakki him, he would purify them. Wa yuallimuhum al kitab wal hikmah, he would teach them the book, and he would teach them hikmah, wisdom. Wisdom can mean the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. According to the commentators, wisdom can mean the commentaries of the Holy Quran. All in all, it means obedience to Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِن كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ظَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Even though the sahabas, they before that, they were in clear misguidance. They were in clear misguidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He continues about us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ the, the last of those, the rest of them who did not meet you all. The rest of them who did not meet you all. Eh? The whole, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to recite unto us the kitab, the holy Quran, and to teach us the book and the hikmah. Though we were not there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making mention the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a very beautiful teacher. And by means of demonstration, he explained to the sahabas what this meant. Because Hatha Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was in the midst of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when this was revealed. And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, who does this refer to? Those who do not meet them. Those who do not meet them. Those who do not meet the sahabas. Those who do not see the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He asked the question once. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained silent. He asked the question twice. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again remained silent. Because the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not speak upon his own women fancy. He only, he only spoke when it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the revelation. If it was an answer he had to give, it was about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. وَمَا يَنْتِكُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not speak upon his own desires as to what he thought this would mean, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So he kept silent. And the sahabas knew, mashallah, that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be awaiting revelation. Then, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he held on to the shoulder of Hadrat Salman Farsi rahmatullahi alayhi. And he said, the, the hadith of, if deen were to go to Thurayya, 
a man from his, his progeny would go up there and bring it down. A man from his progeny would go up there and bring it down. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my dear respected brothers and sisters, he was speaking about deen. If deen was to go very far, there would be a man from Persia who if it was to reach to, the, to, to that group of stars, which is called Thuraya, he would go up there, take it up and bring it back down. And subhanallah, that was a very great man. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was teaching them, وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ Who are those? They are people you have never dreamt about yet. They are people to come afterwards. They are people who will be very, very pious people. In other traditions, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, 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 he praises the people who would come after the sahabas. He praises the people who would come after, after the sahabas and, say, and said that they will be with him in Jannah. Why? Because of their love for him, even though that they did not see them, see him, and see the companions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. Ameen. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came and he showed that, look, people who would come even afterwards, they will be good people. People coming afterwards, they did not, did not see the likeness the countenance of the beautiful face of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who people would just look at him and embrace Islam. People would just look at him, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they would know, listen, this has to be something extraordinary. This is not the normal human being. It cannot be the normal human being. And when he would speak, they would say, no, this is not the speech of a liar. This is not the face of a liar. We did not see it, my dear respected brothers and sisters. But... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants to see how good a human being are we? How good a human being are we? In as much as He has created us with different qualities and different capabilities. Are we in this time and age, 2012, 2012, 1434, are we going to be people who are hooked up on the dunya and we do not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because time is going fast, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Technology is going very fast also. And this is the qadr of Allah. Just as how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that He, just as how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that we would be created in this time, He also decreed that people and technology would be at a very, very high state. People and technology, computers going out. Once upon a time, a person didn't have a computer, then laptop, laptops came in. Now laptops are going out. Then you have the iPhones, and now you have Android iPhones. And mashallah, we use them for the advantage of Islam. Use them to read tafsir. Use them to read Quran. Do not use them for the wrong things, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And this is what we have to teach our young ones. And this is what we have to teach our own selves. And the Rasul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants us to see. He wants, us, he wants to see from us, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that all these favors and all the time that He has given us on the face of the earth, that we use it wisely. And we become closer and closer to him. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked, which human being is the best human being? Which human being is the best human being? He said, Man tala umuruhu wa hasuna amuluhu. He said, those people who are the best, who their lives are long. You and I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us life. Man tala umuruhu wa hasuna amuluhu. And his actions are good. Not only does he have long life just to wake up, yawn, stretch, eat, sleep, no, my dear respected brothers and sisters, but we are becoming closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala fa ayyun nasi sharran. The Sahabi asked, O oh Messenger of Allah, which human being is the worst human being? He said, Man tala umuruhu wa sa'a amaluhu. That person who his age is long, but his actions are evil. His actions are evil. Rawahu Ahmad wa Darami. Reported by Imam Ahmad and Imam Darami. My dear respected brothers and sisters, the point is, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is showing us, your life is not just to be wasted. Your life is not just to be wasted. And we will end off with the hadith, Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. Whosoever resembles a community, they are from amongst them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, mashallah, a good bit of life, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Every one of us, when we look at our life, we are considered to be old. Whether we are young, we are one step, one day closer to our grave, 
And one footstep closer to our grave, my dear respected brothers and sisters. In that regard, we are all old. The young and the old. Because we do not know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the angel of death to come to us. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, we as believers... If we allow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to lead our lives, we will surely know it. We will surely know it. Many a Muslim today is misguided because we follow the non-Muslims, we follow the shaitan, and sometimes we do not even realize it. Sometimes we do not even realize it, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And sometimes it comes in a subtle manner. It comes in a subtle manner and we, we try to Islamize it. And what I am speaking about, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is again and again we are reminded that we are, Christmas season has passed, but that is not an Islamic festival. And we are between Christmas and All Year's Night and New Year's Day. All Year's Eve and New Year's Morning. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, when we look in the Muslim Ummah, we will see how many a Muslim had celebrated Christmas. Even though probably they may, not, they may not have been singing parang, they may not have enjoyed pork as the non-Muslims, yet still they would have been festive. How would they have been festive? But how would they have been festive? They would have been festive by lighting up Christmas trees. They would have had a Christmas tree in their house or no Christmas tree. But when the children woke up, they found gifts and presents. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fa huwa minhum Whosoever resembles a community, they are, from, they are from amongst them. And if we resemble the people in this way, then ma'adhala, we can be resurrected amongst them. This is what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. And likewise, we are going to come up to all year's night. And some people, they will think that there is nothing wrong in waking up and after the, 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 the clock strikes 12, then we can go and meet people. We can hug everyone, greet our aunties and uncles, kiss them. MashaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spared our lives. My dear respected brothers and sisters, as we began this topic, we just have to measure it up with the Quran and the Sunnah. If it is allowed, Alhamdulillah khayrat, MashaAllah do it. If it is not allowed, then we shouldn't do it. And what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us is that we do not have to wait for all year's night to wake up for 12 o'clock to see if we are going to meet the new year. My dear respected brothers and sisters, hasibu qabla an tuhasabu. Reckon yourselves before you are reckoned. I have to learn that and you have to learn that. This is what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Mutu qabla an tamutu. Die before you die. And people will be waiting in anticipation. And this is how the dunya pulls us. This is how the shaitan pulls us. Everyone is waiting in anticipation for the last day of, the, of December. And the Muslims also, whether we know it or we don't know it, some people will be waiting like that also. And some people will say, you know what? I normally wake at 12 o'clock, so no problem, I will go and meet the neighbors. But the question is, why did you not meet them the night before? You are not worried about meeting the neighbors the night before? And more importantly, why are we waking up? Are we like the Sahabas who used to wake up for the entire night or wake up for the last portion of the night and the Rasul, like the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who would wake up in the morning for tahajjud? On the contrary, my dear respected brothers and sisters, people will ensure to wake up to see 12 o'clock, 12 a.m. that morning. But the question is, how many of them will be performing the Fajr Salah? Again, my dear respected brothers and sisters, you and I can test our own selves. Notch it up with what the people are doing and what Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants us to do. Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants us to perform the meals Isha salah in jama' and perform the Fajr salah in jama' come as come, the least. If we can, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, wake up 4 o'clock, wake up 3 o'clock, wake up 3.30, not to meet the New Year's morning, but to perform tahajjud salah. To perform tahajjud salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down. He comes down to the lowest heaven in the last portion of the night. And asks, who is there to ask from me? Who is there to ask from me? So that I can give him. But my dear respected brothers and sisters, unfortunately, the Muslims are failing in their jobs. We are failing in our jobs. And we are not speaking to our Muslim brothers and sisters enough 
So much so that many of them are involved in these non-Muslim festivities. And man tashambaha bikawmin fahuwa minhum. If we resemble the Sahabas, and we wake up in the third portion of the night and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, lengthen our lives that we can do your worship, then we will be up from amongst them. But if we wake up to see 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock and we are merrymaking because it is New Year's Day, then man tashabbaha minhum fahuwa man tashabbaha bikawmin fahuwa minhum. Whosoever resembles a community, they are from amongst them. And by extension, that person who dies in a state, he will be resurrected in that very state. And ma'adhullah, how many a Muslim can die in that state, my dear respected brothers and sisters? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear respected brothers and sisters, give you and me the tawfiq. Whereby we can understand that of course, we will not be equal with regards to manner of thinking. We will not be equal with regards to strength. We will not be equal with regards to doing things and approach to things. We are all different. We are all different by temperament and by nature, my dear respected brothers and sisters. But we must all be unified upon Islam. We must all be unified upon Islam. And the Muslims, they do things in togetherness. That's why we can perform Salat al-Aisha in Jama'ah. And, and we can perform the Fajr Salah in Jama'ah. All of us with our different temperaments, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we can come together for the unity of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Unite our hearts because this is the most important thing. That when our hearts are united, we can have different way, different way of thinking. But inshallah, we will love one another. We will care for one another. We will look out for one, one, one another. We will speak to one another upon the, the, the da'wah of Islam. And inshallah, we will enjoy right and forbid evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you and me the tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.